The next ah, speaker okay. is Ahmet Uzun from Middle East and Technical University. Ahmet is just graduated uh, and he will start the grad school this semester, I think. And today he will talk about the applications of one fixed point theorem. Okay, when you're ready. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, in the last two months, uh, I have studied functionalism in uh, general, especially I focus on uh, four important theorems in this. Banach theorem. Uh, I will talk about uh, Banach fixed point theorem and some of its applications. Uh, let me summary what uh, I'm going to talk about. Uh, firstly, uh, I'm going to describe two uh, definitions, uh, which are fixed points and uh, construction mappings. Uh, need to construct them our main theorem. Then I will introduce Banach fixed point theorem. And finally, we will discuss about its two application in uh, integral equations, uh, which is spread on equations. And, uh, differential equations. Uh, let me start with uh, definitions. First, uh, let's take a function. And if uh, this function maps a point to itself, it's, uh, we will call this point a fixed point of f. I mean, if f of c is c, then c is a fixed point of f. Uh, let me give you some uh, examples. Uh, for example, uh, let's take uh, Identity mapping. Identity mapping has uh, infinite many fixed points, but uh, this polynomial uh, has no fixed point. And finally, this polynomial has only one fixed point, which is two. I mean, f of two is two. Uh, now I will talk about uh, contraction mapping. Uh, we will take a function defined on a metric space xd. Uh, and if the distance between the images always less than or equal to a, a distance between input, we will call this function a contraction mapping. Contraction mapping. Uh, now uh, we uh, we have all ingredients to mention our main theorem, which is Banach fixed point theorem. Uh, this theorem says that if we have a complete metric space with a contraction mapping T, uh, then T has a unique fixed point, let's say x star. Uh, I mean, t of x star is x star, and we can find this x star as follows. Uh, we can start with an, any arbitrary element in our complete metric space x, and we can define a, a sequence. Then uh, we will have t of x n minus 1 will be, uh, will be x x n and this process we will call uh, will be called iteration then x n x n will converge to uh, x uh, star and also i can explain this in uh, other way if i uh, put this x0 to infinitely many times in our uh, operator we will reach our fixed point uh, now let me uh, introduce some application of uh, this theorem. We can use in linear equations, differential equations, and integral equations. And also we can use in uh, Bellman equations, which is important uh, economy, uh, machine learning, and optimization. Uh, I, I can uh, tell all I know uh, about this topic after this presentation, if you wish. Uh, Let's see how can we use this theorem in integral equations. Let me give you some uh, tools uh, that we will need. Uh, let's A, B be a closed interval, which will be given. Mu be, be constant, V uh, a continuous function on A, B. Uh, X, D, X of D uh, is unknown, which we want to find. And G is a square in uh, R square. And finally, K, uh, k is the kernel of the integral, then uh, the integral of this form is called Fredholm equation of uh, second kind. Uh, we may ask some questions like, when does this integral equation have a solution? Or uh, if it is exists, is the solution unique? Or does mu depend on any other parameters to have a unique solution? Uh, there is a one important theorem that 
answer all these quest questions by uh, using Panafix point theorem. Uh, so let me introduce the let me introduce the theorem. Uh, let's take K and B continuous functions on G and A B respectively, and will be a constant. I will uh, define the simulator. Uh, then freedom into integral equation has a unique solution x on j, and this x can be found by a iterative sequence uh, as I define above uh, with this. Uh, equation. So uh, let me give a proof. Firstly, since we want to apply Bana fixed point theorem, we need a complete metric space. So I will con consider it on C of AB with a maximum metric. But I need to uh, prove this statement. So my claim is uh, CJ, J is uh, close interval AB. Uh, and D is a complete metric space. My claim is this. Uh, let me prove this claim. It's important to note that AB is any closed interval on R. And since R is a complete metric space and A of B is a closed subset of this complete metric space, A of B indeed is a com complete metric space. Uh, so let me take a Cauchy sequence in CJ. Then by uh, classical, epsilon definition, we have this uh, distance will be less than epsilon and m and n uh, will be larger than uh, uh, n, which is a positive number. Uh, hence, we can fix a point, let's say t0, then since the metric gives a maximum term, which is less than epsilon, if I put t t0, this term will be again less than epsilon. So this shows that indeed xn of t0 is a Cauchy sequence of real numbers. Uh, and since AB is complete, the sequence convergence, let's say xm converges to xt0 as m goes to infinity. Uh, and this defines a, a pointwise convergence to a fun function x. And we need to show that x is indeed in uh, Cj. Uh, so let's. Let's try to prove this. Uh, as m goes to infinity, uh, matrix becomes d of x comma x n, which will be less than epsilon again. Hence, for any x uh, t in j, this inequality uh, remains. And this shows that indeed x n converges to x uniformly on j. And since all uh, elements of this Cauchy sequence are continuous on J and the convergence is uniformly, then the limit function X is continuous on J. And also we know that it's and converges to X. And since our metric uh, contains all uh, continuous functions, X is in this metric space. Hence, C of J is complete metric space. Uh, now I have to assume that K contains on G because I want to make my operator, which will be defined define later, must be continuous to apply Banach's point theorem. So let's say uh, K continues on G, and uh, since it's continuous on a, a closed shape, uh, it's also bound. Let's say uh, absolute value of this function less than or equal to some C for all T and tau. And let's define an operator T uh, from C to C by uh, something like this. And uh, we know left and right hand side is our uh, integral equation. So we want to show that indeed this is equal to X uh, by using a uh, banal fixed point theorem. And since V and K are continuous, T is a continuous operator or bound operator. Now we need to check that uh, whether T is a co contraction or not. So let's start our our metric again and put this term t of x and t of y. Uh, then we can use uh, simple algebraic equations. Uh, easily show that this term is uh, less than uh, uh, last terms. And uh, this can be written as d of uh, images with less than alpha times d of input, where alpha is this, uh, where c is uh, boundary of K, 
function, k kernel. So if we choose alpha less than one, it means this inequality, then t becomes a contraction. So uh, t satisfies all conditions of Banach fixed point theorem. Thus, by fi Banach fixed point theorem, we know that t is a unique fixed point, let's say x. So indeed, we have this equality. This uh, integral equation is indeed uh, x of t, and it contains an integral. Uh, so by this process, we prove that our uh, integral equation has a solution, and this solution is unique by uh, Banach fixed point theorem. Now, uh, let's see how can we use uh, this theorem in integral equation. I mean, Banach fixed point theorem in dif uh, differential equation, sorry. So we have a uh, well-known theorem, Picard's existence and uniqueness theorem. Uh, let's take a, a rectangle in R2 and define a uh, IVP, initial value problem, where f is contained on this rectangle uh, and thus bound on this rectangle. Let's say um, absolute value of f less than c for any uh, t and x in uh, our rectangle. Uh, Moreover, uh, let's suppose that this function satisfies something like this uh, inequality, which is called Lipschitz condition of second kind. Uh, it says difference of uh, two images of two uh, inputs with less than uh, k times uh, second terms of inputs. Uh, then, Theorem says that this IVP has a unique solution, and this solution exists on an inter interval t0 minus beta, t0 plus beta, where beta is uh, less than minimum of a b over c or 1 over k. I will explain this. So let's start our proof. Again, let's take the uh, metric space of all real valued quantities functions on the interval j, uh, which is metric, uh, with maximum metric, which is complete. Uh, we know this by uh, previous application. Uh, now I will try to explain step by step. Uh, firstly, let me define a new subset of our uh, metric space. Uh, and this uh, metric space, uh, this subspace C bar, uh, be, de be defined, as, defined as something like this, uh, absolute value of any function minus any function from this subspace minus x0 the less than or equal to c times beta. I need to uh, prove c but is complete in c of j. Uh, let's start my uh, proof of this claim. Again, let's take a Cauchy sequence in our subspace. Uh, and we know that this sequence also in c of j. So for any x, we have uh, this inequality since all elements of this sequence lies in C bar. And since C is complete, the sequence converts to a point which lies in C. I mean, let's say Xn converts to X. Thus, again, by epsilon definition, uh, the distance will be less than epsilon for any element of this uh, sequence. Now we can consider this term, epsilon poly term, which we need to show C bar is complete. And again, by using a triangular inequality, we can easily show that indeed this uh, difference will be less than or equal to C times uh, beta. Hence, uh, the limit point X stays in uh, C bar and thus C bar is complete. We can also prove this by showing that C bar is closed in C of J since C of J is complete. But I think this proof is uh, more beautiful. Now, step two, let's define an operator from C bar to C bar by uh, similar to our uh, integral equ equations. Uh, I need to show that T is a contraction on C bar. And by Lipschitz conditions, it's easy to uh, show this. And uh, by using, again, something like integral properties, we can easily show that T x between uh, the distance between T x and T v. Uh, less than or equal to alpha times d of x and y, where alpha x k times uh, beta. But we know that beta is less than or 
less than minimum of a b of c, b over c and one over k. So indeed alpha less than one. So t is a contraction on c bar. Hence we all need to uh, we we have all term, uh, conditions to apply Banach fixed point theorem, and hence t is a unique fixed point x in c bar satisfying x x equal to t t x. So uh, we have this, uh, we have something like this equality. Uh, it's similar to integral equation as I did before. Hence, since everything is uh, continuous, we can differentiate both both sides, and we will ha have our initial valid problems. So indeed, this x we found satisfies the IVP. So this completes our proof. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, if I made a mistake, forgive me. And uh, these are my references. Uh, if you have a question, I would like to answer them. Okay, thank you, Ahmed. Let's thank our speaker first. <laughs> okay. Uh, in question.